Yeah, you want to go ahead and say it? Yeah, I'm going to ask me quick. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, morning. good to see you in the Lord's house today. We do appreciate all the ones that are here this morning. I know it's rainy and messy outside, but it sure is a good day to be in the Lord's house. Amen. And uh, we appreciate you for being here. Appreciate the good singing and uh, songs that we've had so far. We sure do appreciate that. It's it's sad that we only get to hear some of those two or three times a year, I guess, when you really begin to think about it. But, but it is a joy to uh, have Miss Melody sing and, and get everything together and appreciate her for doing that. Uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, let's turn to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. It, it almost seems weird that just a few days from now we'll be celebrating Christmas. Um, and, uh, and it seems like the year has flown by, but uh, I think the, the older that you get, it seems like that is true. Uh, I, I remember as a child, it seemed like Christmas took forever to get here. And uh, now that I'm an adult, it seems like it just hurries up and, and, and comes. So I, 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 I don't really understand that, but um, uh, it seems like that is the case. So uh, it won't be long that we'll be getting together with family and friends and celebrating uh, this time of the year. We'll be opening presents. We'll be eating, fellowshipping, and all of that. But I hope in all of that that we don't lose sight of what this time is really all about. And it's about uh, the one that we sung about, the one that we came this morning to worship. And uh, I, I, I want us to make sure that we always hold that dear to our hearts. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, we're going to begin in verse 1, and we'll read down through uh, verse number 12. It, it, it says, beginning in verse 1, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the, king, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, and, or in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written in the in the prophet, or by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that, that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent by them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in the dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Let us pray. Father, we love you today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we're able to open up our Bibles, that we're able to study, that we're able to hear the good news this morning. God, I pray, Lord, as we worship here today and as we uh, meet here, God, to fellowship with one another, but more importantly with you, God, I pray, Lord, that you just speak to us, that you'd uh, uh, come down and worship with us for just a little bit today. Help us hear uh, these words that's been prepared today. God, let my lips speak your word in spirit and in truth, God. Remove any hindrance, remove any problem that might be in this place, God, that we might clearly hear from heaven today. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning our focus is going to be mainly on these wise men that are mentioned in this scripture today. And, and uh, we're going to hopefully begin to bring out a few things that we can learn from these wise men. I, I want to tell you, if you ever uh, learn from anybody, you need to learn from somebody that's wise. Have you, have you ever been taught by somebody that was not wise? 
Let me tell you, they'll lead you in the wrong direction. They'll tell you the wrong things. There's a lot of people at work that I, I work with and probably you work with that we kind of steer away from when it comes time to train or try, times to learn. You know why? Because they really don't know the right way to go. Let me tell you, I'm afraid that there's a lot of people in church today that are not considered wise men. You know why? Because they're not leading people in the right direction. I want to tell you, to be wise in the things of God is definitely something that we ought to strive to be. If I teach you anything, I want to teach you to go in the right direction. I want to teach you to go in the right way of doing things. That's how I am with my kids. I want to teach them the right way. You know why? Because more than likely they're going to grow up and do some of the same things that I'm doing right now. I, it's my prayer that when they grow up and they depart from me and, and they have their own families that they're going to stick with church and go to church. Why? Because mom and daddy took them to church. That's what we've got to do. These wise men ought to teach us something this morning. Our focus is going to be these wise men that God was leading to a place where Christ was born. The story of these wise men visiting Christ was, is an interesting story when you begin to think about it. Wise men is literally interpreted as magi. In other words, they were probably of the learned class that studied astrology and these kindred kinds of sciences. In other words, they were smart people. They were somebody that could look up and tell you a lot about the skies and a lot about uh, uh, the, the stars and the uh, uh, things that were happening back in that day. These wise men began a, began a long trip to Israel simply because of one star in the sky. You think about this. They didn't go because there were a, a, a cluster of stars in the sky or, 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 or because of uh, uh, some kind of crazy thing that was happening, but they made this journey because of one star that was in the sky. And I began to think about this, this idea of just one thing. Has one thing ever uh, 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 had an experience on your life that totally changed the way that you uh, interpreted things. Of all the stars in the sky that they had seen over the years and they had studied and maybe they had written things down, this one particular star had great meaning in their life. I like that it only took one star to get these men to go on a journey. Just one star. And I'm glad that's kind of how God works. He can take just one thing to lead somebody to Christ. He can take one message or one song or one verse and get a hold of somebody's life. Many of us today can, can testify of this, that it took just one service or one message or one song or one person witnessing or one person testifying that got a hold of our heart to lead us to God. Can you say that this morning, that one person, one thing got a hold of your heart to bring you to Christ? Surely God can use so many things to get a person's attention. But I believe a majority of the time it takes just one thing to cause somebody to make a decision for Christ. And what should get our attention is this, that this one thing can influence someone that we, ha we can have an impact on to come to church. Think about this. If, if, if that one thing that might get somebody's attention, that one thing might be us. That one thing might be us inviting them to come to church. It might be us saying, uh, uh, how are you living your life? Or testifying to them. Or telling them about the good news of the gospel. That's why it's so important the way that we live our lives today. Because we might be that one thing that gets somebody to come to church. Or that one thing that keeps somebody else from coming to church. You realize you can witness to people today and you know what? Some of them will tell you I'm just as good as so and so that goes down there to that church. You know why? Because they've studied them. They've looked at them. They know exactly what they're, what they're doing or what they're going through and we all know those people that go to church and they don't live right and they don't care to live that way. But let me tell you, they're going to stand before God one of these days and give an account for the way they live their life and the impact they had on somebody else. Let me tell you, sure, people have an impact on us. But let me tell you, I'm not going to base my eternity on what somebody else does or what somebody else doesn't do. 
The thing about it is, is I've had people in church to hurt my feelings, to do things against me that I would never have imagined to happen that way. But you know what? Thank God that I didn't base my eternity on what they did or didn't do. Amen. This morning, what I'm trying to tell you is these wise men, they had one thing in mind. They were going and following this one star. This morning as we come together today and we're getting ready for Christmas and we're thinking about all the things that we're going to have to do and many of you are already planning on the meal we're going to have or the, uh, the presents we're going to do or the things we're going to go and, and, and do during this holiday season. Let me tell you, there ought to be one thing in our minds. And that's the birth of Christ. That's Christ Himself. The one that Miss Melody sung about. The one that, uh, that she began to tell us about. Let me tell you, that's the one that we need to focus on today. Each and every one of us. We have the potential to be the key to somebody else making a decision for Christ. Let me tell you, we think about our church and we say, well, we want to see it grow and we want to see things happen and we want to see people come. Let me tell you, our greatest thing ought to be that we have an impact on someone's life. Amen. Let me tell you, we may never fill up a church. We, we, might, we might have it. We might have to build bigger buildings. I don't know, but I do know one thing, that our main purpose and our main goal is to have an impact on other people's life for Christ. Whether it's five people, whether it's 500 people, we are to have that impact on Christ. Let me tell you, as we begin to look at this and we begin to study what these, uh, is happening in this Scripture, we begin to look at that these men had a great journey, that they went from where they were to, to the place that Christ was born. This morning, <coughs> as we begin to think about this, we begin to think about our lives. You see, it's amazing the impact that we can have on someone else's life. I want my impact on others to be a positive thing. I want to point others to Christ and cause them uh, to get closer and closer to Christ instead of pushing them away. You see, I believe our church has great opportunity right now to be reaching others. Let me tell you, we don't, we don't uh, as we've sat down, at, 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 I think we discussed it in some of the elders' meetings and we were talking about, you know, I don't want us to, to, to have this idea, well, we've always done it this way. Somebody kind of brought this up, well, you know what, we're, we're less than two years old, so we can't really say that very often. <laughs> we, we, can't, we might say well, we did it like this last year, but we can't say we always done it this way. And you see, that, that's, the, that's the idea is that we've got to make, make sure that we have uh, this opportunity to reach people. Maybe some people like nobody else can. We've got to have the idea that we're going to do everything we can to have an impact on someone's life. In this scripture that we're looking at today, just one star led these wise men on a great journey. They traveled for what could have been several months to get to this particular place. That's kind of how God is. Sometimes to get to where God wants you to be, sometimes it doesn't take very long. But sometimes it sure takes a good while to get there. The thing about it is, is, is a lot of times we'll pray. Have you ever prayed for something and it seemed like before you got off your knees or before you got back to doing your regular thing that God had already answered the prayer? I tell you, I love those. I, I love that when I, when I can pray and it seems like God has already done it before I get through praying. It's kind of like going through the drive-thru at Jack's and, and you get up there and, 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 and they've already got the, the, the meal ready for you. You say, this is a good day. But what happens when they, they tell you this dreaded thing? Will you just pull up a little bit? <laughs> Woo, that'll try your patience right there. This is supposed to be a drive-through. This is supposed to be fast food. We have to pull up there, and I've done it. I've pulled up there and sat there, and, and then they'll bring the food out to you. That's kind of how we are sometimes with God. If God doesn't answer our prayer right then, you know what we do? We pull our little truck up and we say, you know what, this is ridiculous. I have prayed and God, I've asked God to do something, but I'm having to wait. Let me tell you, more than, more than, all, uh, more than uh, uh, the other, we're going to have to wait on things. Think about these, these, uh, these wise men that were traveling. 
They didn't get in their pickup and go down the road. They didn't get in a jet and go find this place. But they had to walk or they had to ride camels to get to this place where Christ was going to be born. How many of us today is that dedicated to finding the place where Christ is? Let me tell you, a lot of you know what it's like to try to begin a church or start a church and how hard that is. You've got to put a lot of work into it. You've got to put a lot of thought into it. You've got to put a, a lot of effort into it to get anywhere. But let me tell you, it's going to be worth it in the end. Think about these wise men. How many months they may have had to be away from their family to get to this place. It's a story when you begin to think about it. It's not a story right here to entertain us or, 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 or any of that, but it's to teach us something. Let me tell you, as you read the Scripture, it might not be a lot of exciting things as far as what the wise men did, but it sure was exciting when they got to that place. That's kind of how we are a lot of times. In our journey, there might be a lot of hard times. It might be difficult to get to the place that God wants us to be. But when we get there, think about the joy and the excitement to know that you're where God wants you to be. I like that these wise men were labeled wise men. You see, they're seeking a newborn king. They were seeking a Messiah. You think about the Jewish people. The ones that, that, that was God's people or are labeled God's people. They overlooked Christ. But these wise men, they said, you know what? There's something about this, this newborn king. Look at verse number 2. It says, uh, it's saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Let me tell you, what would church be like today if that was our main purpose? If we came to church and we said, you know what, we're seeking the newborn king. We're coming to worship him. I dare say that most people that are in church this morning, that, that are coming to church today across America, they are not coming just to worship him. But they've got other ideas and other things in their heart for the reason that they're in church today. Look at verse 6. It says, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. These wise men. They were pretty wise when you begin to think about it. The knowledge that they had, the things that God had already shown them, they were coming to seek Him and only Him. What would, what would my life be like if that was my main purpose and goal? What would our church be like if that was our main purpose and goal, that we come into this place just to seek Him? You see, it would do all of us good if we would put things aside and just seek the King. Put cares aside and seek Him. How many of us has got worry and trouble and hurt in our lives that we, that we get all of those things in front of us instead of seeking the King? Let me tell you, if truth be known, I, I could pile up my problems and my troubles and my hurts that I've had over the years and I could pile them up all on you and every time we come in here, I could say, you know what, I'm thinking about the things that I've been hurt over. I'm thinking about all the problems and the cares that I've got. Let me tell you, just because I'm a preacher doesn't mean that I don't have problems or I don't have cares or I don't have worries. Because I share them just like you do. But let me tell you, when we come through here, it's not about us. But it ought to be about Him. We ought to put our worries and our troubles aside. The thing about it is, if we leave them in the car, they will still be there when we get back there. I promise you. But when we come in here, we're to worship Him. You see, we're not to be careful. Or we're to be careful not to lose sight of the idea of seeking Him. You see, that is an ongoing thing and it's something that we got to be faithful at doing. Some think, well, you know, I've, I've been in church for so long and I, I, I've done this and I've done that. But I want to tell you, seeking Christ has to be a continual thing. You realize some people think they've uh, reached where they need to be and they don't have anything else that they've got to be doing I, I, there's people that I've come in contact with that they think they've reached that place where, where they have accomplished everything. Let me tell you, I don't think we reach that until we get to heaven. Amen. I think we're st still to be striving, to be getting closer to God. When you think about where we're at this morning, how much are you seeking God? How much are you striving to be closer to Him? 
our church, our family, and our lives will get in trouble when we're not seeking Christ. The times in my life and the times in any church's life is when we begin to think of other stuff other than Christ. Have you ever known a church that seems like they're, they're growing and, and things are happening and all of a sudden they begin to start thinking about other things instead of putting Christ first? Let me tell you, I, I've heard of a church just recently, uh, and I, I'm not going to go in very much detail, but, but it, it seemed like they were growing and, and, and money was coming in and a lot of things was happening, and it seems like right now they're just at a lull. You know why? Because I think they began to look at these other things instead of looking at Christ. Let me tell you, having good donations and good tithes is a good thing. Having a building is a good thing, and having all of that is a good thing, but that's not our number one thing. Our number one thing is Christ. That's how we're going to go through and that's how we're going to grow as far as the church, as far as our families, as far as our individual lives is to put Him first. You see, our prayer this morning should be that God would teach us to be like these wise men. You say, well, what, what did these wise men do? I want to give you four things this morning if I can. And these four things is I want us to learn from these wise men. First of all, God puts forth great effort to reach every person. Do you realize that this morning? That God doesn't, it doesn't matter a person's situation. It doesn't matter where a person's been. It doesn't matter how far away they are from God. God is willing to reach anybody. But you know what? Sometimes we're not that way. Hey, if they're easy and, 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 and we see them on the way to church, we might stop and invite them to church. But how many of us go out of our way to reach somebody? Let me tell you, I sure am glad God's like that. You know why? Because that Sunday morning that I was not even in church, that God saved my soul, I, nobody came and knocked on my door, Brother Neil. Nobody came to me and said, you need to get right. But you know what? It was God that came and knocked on my heart and, knew, and, and began to convict me and began to reach down to where I was at. And I'm glad this morning that God puts great effort to reach every person that He possibly can. God wants and desires to reach all that He can. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let me tell you, it's not our class in society or where we stand with anybody else. God doesn't care about any of that. Who He cares about is our souls. He cares about us. You see, this is shown in Scripture. Here with these wise men. Verses 1 and 2, it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. You see, it says that the wise men came from the east. Maybe they came from Arabia or, or Persia or Mesopotamia. And I, I saw in one place that this estimated that they could have come 500 to 1,000 miles to get to this place. Let me tell you, that's a long ways. We, we went just a while back, I, I guess it was, well, it was in July, we went down to, to Disney. We pulled our camper down there. <laughs> Woo -wee! That's fun. Probably something we won't do again. <laughs> we had a blowout on the way down there and a blowout on the way back. That was fun. Mama was with us. She had a good time. <laughs> but the idea of going down there, and I don't even I don't really know even the mileage. I'm assuming it's around four or five hundred miles probably down there one way. But uh, you think about that, we were in the truck going down there. And and and, and, and having four kids and well, it was about seven of us in the truck, I guess. And and and, and thankfully, uh, they they were okay about getting down there because they were excited about getting down there. But but we can go sometimes to Alex City over here. The last time I think we went over there, they said, "Are we there yet? How long is this going to take? How long is this going to take?" And, and and you begin to think about five hundred to a thousand miles that these people may have traveled over sand. On, uh, walking on camels, whatever the case was. They didn't get in the truck, but they, they, they were dedicated to going on this trip. You see, it, it, this is an extremely long ways back in that day. 
They were, they were that far away from God. But God began to call them. You see, these wise men were more than likely Gentiles. They were not the Jewish people coming to see their king, but they were Gentiles that were coming to see the newborn king. The Jews thought about, uh, 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 or thought about the promised Messiah, and, and they thought that they were coming from the for just the Jewish people. But let me tell you, this newborn king was making a way that not just Jewish people could be saved, but Gentiles as well. And what was happening? God was beginning to call these Gentile people to the place that Christ was going to be born. I read that these men were learned scientists, that they were astrologers. They were involved in magic and things of the, uh, of, about nature. In other words, they were practicing things that God had forbidden for His people. Yet God was still calling them. You say, well, is God contradicting Himself? Surely He's not. No, He's not. So what does this tell us? That these wise men were extremely far away from God. They were not considered God's people. They were involved in things outside of what God approves of. Yet, what was God doing? Calling to them. Ain't that just like people today? Let me tell you, the majority of the people that you're going to witness to, they're going to be far away from God. They're going to be involved in things that God does not approve of. Yet, what is your, what is your uh, 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 job that God wants you to do to witness to them, to call to them, to tell them that God loves them and God cares for them? You see, that's what we've got to do. Sometimes it's hard, but we've got to do it anyway. So when we look at this, what does this tell us? That no one is too far away that God cannot tell, that, can, that God cannot touch them. That you may not have the right name or not be right of the or part of the right family, but God loves you. You see, the people that we're going to be witnessing to, the people we're going to be inviting to church, they may not have the right name. They may seem way far away from God. But I want to tell you, do not underestimate God's ability to save anyone. God can save whoever He calls. Everybody that comes to Him can be saved. Let me tell you, I, I, I've, I've witnessed to somebody before and somebody else found out about it. They told me, they said, but basically, I'm not sure why you're witnessing to Him. He's so far gone and so far. Let me tell you, that's not correct. Not any, no, no one is too far away from God. If they'll open up their heart, God can save them. And God can call them to a place that they need to be. Listen to this, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Me and Cole watch these things on TV and we, we uh, like these uh, mystery type things and, 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 and the police investigating and all this kind of stuff. And, 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 and some of them, the people have done horrible things. Let me tell you, some of them are in jail. But you begin to think about some of the things that we think about. Well, so-and-so deserves to be there. Maybe the actions that they did, they do deserve to be there. But let me tell you, they're not beyond God's grace and God's mercy. That's the thing that we've got to look at. These people, when you look at the wise men, let me tell you, they probably were not on the church roll. They probably didn't go to church every Sunday. They were doing things that God did not approve of. Yet God was calling them to the place where the newborn king was going to be born. Romans 10 verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, people use this excuse all the time that people are too far away. You know what Isaiah 59 verse 1 says? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is the ear heavy that it cannot hear. You see, God is willing to save and to touch anybody. God's grace is greater than any man's sin. The Bible says in Romans 5 verse 20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. The next person that God tells you to witness to, and you think in your mind, well, I just don't know about that person. They've done a lot of bad things. Let me tell you, think about God's grace instead of what they've done. And God can save and He can call anyone. He called these wise men. He put uh, forth great effort to reach everyone. And he, re he tried to reach these wise men. These wise men heard. These wise men came. 
Secondly, this morning, God wants us to diligently seek Him. You see, the Bible teaches us that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, one of my favorite verses. It says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. That's who God rewards, is one that diligently seeks Him. We can look at these wise men and see that they were diligently seeking God. The effort that these wise men put forth was more than just walking down the road and seeing the baby. It was more than getting in a vehicle and going up to Alabaster and seeing a baby that was born in the hospital. It was a journey. It was a great effort went into all of this. As we talked about earlier, maybe they spent a, a 500 to 1,000 miles journeying to this place. Maybe it took three months or longer to get there. Their journey east. Or their journey cost them. As they went to the east, it cost them time and money and precious gifts. How many of us this morning are willing to do much of anything if it cost us something? How, how many times do you go out and, 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 and Cole will tell you about this. If, if, if I want to buy something, you know what I do? I, 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 I list up the cost. And I list up what, what it's going to impact us. And, and, and sometimes she'll be like, just go buy it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just not that person. I, I say, well, you know, we, we could use this money for something else and we could do this. But I, I, I want to tell you, we, we've got to consider the cost of this thing of going with God. You see, the thing about it is, and we make this, we make this uh, 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 joke sometimes, but we'll, we'll talk about it's raining outside. How many people are not coming to church this morning because it's raining? Let me tell you, we're not riding on horseback. We're not ri ri uh, riding in wagons to get here. We're not going to be soaking wet when we get here. But you know what? This right here, just this right here, keeps a lot of people away from church. You know why? Because they haven't considered the cost. They haven't said, you know what, I'm not all in on this thing. You see, it's, it's sad when you begin to think about the people that are not coming to church this morning because of all the excuses. The truth of it is, is there's not a lot of people that diligently seek God anymore. So many today aren't putting much of anything into their relationship with God. And it shows. Many people think, well, you know what, I'll just say a prayer or I'll sign a card or I'll go to church every once in a while. But God wants you to put great effort into your work with God. We are to invest everything that we have into this relationship. The truth of it is, it's going to cost us time. It's going to cost us money. It's going to cost us precious gifts. We're going to have to invest into it. And instead of slacking in our effort with God, we've got to put forth everything. That goes for everybody in this place. If we're going to grow this church and we're going to have an impact on God, we've got to invest in it. We've got to say, I'm willing to go and I'm willing to do everything that's required to accomplish God's will for our lives. Many aren't being blessed. You know why? Because they're not diligently seeking Him. Their mindset is, I'll, do, I'll let someone else do it. I'll, I'll come to church and I'll say it there and if God wants to bless me, He'll bless me. That is a terrible outlook. On coming to church. Amen. You know what? We all come to church and say, you know what? God's going to bless me. Why? Because of the things I've done. I have lived right. I've read my Bible. I've prayed. Whatever you want to say. You can say all those things and you can say, I'm coming to church and God's going to bless me because I'm trying and I'm striving to do what God's wanting me to do. Does that mean you're going to be blessed every time you come through the doors? It may not be. But let me tell you, it sure will pay off. When you do and you strive and you do everything that God's wanting you to do and God blesses you. Serving God is not a once a week type of thing. It's a daily walk. That effort that's got to go into it. Is it easy? It sure isn't. When you think about it, I put sweat, I put tears, I put time in my ministry and my walk with Him. And, 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 and let me tell you, I'm not, I may not be exactly where God wants me to be as far as, as, as knowing as much as I need to or all, all of that. I'm not saying that I have arrived because I haven't. But let me tell you, I've put effort into the things that I've done. Let me tell you, I, I take offense when somebody begins to uh, uh, say that I'm not doing things right or I've made this mistake or that mistake. I, put, I, I get offended over stuff like that. You know why? Because I know what I've put in to my walk with God. Maybe it, it, it's not as much as I need to. Maybe I need to do more. 
But I do know the things I've been through and the things that I've went through in my walk with Him. Think about how much it would be, it's going to be worth it when we get to the place that God has prepared for us. To know that we've put everything possible into serving Him. You see, we've got to go beyond just the basics and we've got to put forth effort. Our relationship with Christ is the most important thing that we could have. Everything else hinges on that relationship. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says this, Ask, and, ye shall be, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. You know how you have a good relationship with somebody else? Put a good, you put effort into it. You know how you have a good marriage? It's not just seeing them every once in a while, hey, how you doing? <laughs> you know what? You've got to talk to them. You've got to put forth effort. Sometimes you may not feel like doing anything. But sometimes you might go cook for them. You might not feel like doing anything, but you go and, 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 and you make an effort to do something to help them instead of you. See, why, why do we think it's any different from God? Why do we think that God owes us something when we don't give Him anything? You see, that's the reason we ought to come in here and praise Him. It's because He has given us so much. The third thing this morning is that we need to worship Christ. Think about these wise men as they came. They went through a lot to get to Christ. But look what the wise men did when they first got there. It says in verse 11, And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. That's the first thing they did when they got there. They didn't greet people. They didn't stand around and talk. They didn't eat. They didn't fellowship. But the Bible says they fell down and they worshipped Him. Think about the place. They had been 500 to 1,000 miles to get there. They had taken months and weeks to get there. And the first thing they did is fall down and worship Him. You see, this morning this tells me that worship is not an option with Christ. We need to worship Him. You see, that's, that ought to be the first thing that we do when we come into this place is to worship Him. That's the first thing that Christ, the wise men did when they got to Christ. The Bible says they fell down and they worshiped Him and they presented Him with gifts. You know what? They didn't walk through the door and say, you know what, I'm here. Give me, give me something. That's how a lot of people are in church, aren't they? Well, we have, I, hey, we have showed up this morning. What are y'all giving me? That's how a lot of people in church act. But you know what the wise men did? They came through there, they fell down, they worshipped Him, and they said, we present this to you. Their, their focus was on Him, not them. And that's how we're going to be able to, to, to get close to God. That's how God's going to bless us. It's when we begin to think that it's about Him and not about us. You see, they presented gifts to Him. What a beautiful picture of what church should be like. I'm afraid that many today have turned church into being about themselves instead of being about Him. It's about our problems. It's about our cares, our needs, our feelings. Instead of about being about worshiping Him. How many times do you, do you hear about people in church that get their feelings hurt? <laughs> Let me tell you, if it was about getting my feelings hurt, I'd have never got off the ground very long. You know why? Because it didn't take very long until my feelings got hurt. Let me tell you, the, the thing about it is, I'm not saying that the church here, that we're never going to get our feelings hurt. Chances are you're going to. But you know what? Push it to the side. And say, you know what? I'm not here about me. I'm here about Him. I'm here to serve Him. Chances are some of you might say something to me one day to hurt my feelings. Chances are I may get up here and preach about something. You say, I don't really like that. Let me tell you, I, I can't do anything about it if it's in the Bible. I got to do it. The thing about it is, it's not about our feelings, but it's about serving Him. These wise men that were not considered what you could say church people, they were not considered what you would say God's people, but God was calling to them. And it, it, they, they give a great picture of what we need to be like. They came to worship Him. See, if we really want to see God move in our church... We've got to get back to being about it being about Him and not about us. You see, they came for one purpose and they left everything else outside. They came to worship Him. You know what? They didn't come through the door and say, you know what? My feet sure do hurt. You got somewhere I can soak my feet for a little bit or can I take a bath? They didn't, they didn't do any of that. 
They came through the door and they said, you know what, this is the one that we've come to serve. They began to worship Him. To me, it, get, it can get good on Sundays. It can get good in church when we, when we come for one purpose, and that's to worship Him. I'm telling you this morning that if we want to have better services, if we want to see people come to church, if we want to see God have an impact on, in our church, if we want to see God have an impact in our marriages, in our families, we've got to get back to it being about Him and not about us. I'm just being honest with you this morning. You see, the purpose of our church ought to be to worship Him. If you think about it, we labor and we have problems six days a week. But Sunday should be a time that we come in here just to worship Him. Nothing else, just to worship Him. The last thing that we learned from the wise men this morning is that we need to continue to be led by God's Spirit. When you look at the wise men today, the wise men had, had, had some more experience that day. I'm not sure that they fully even grasped the magnitude of what was happening that day as they come into this place and they saw the newborn king and they worshipped him and they presented him with gifts. I'm not sure that they really understood everything that was going on. But you see, the thing about it is, even after they experienced that moment, they were still allowed God to be led by him. We know the story, the story of King Herod and the reason that he wanted to find out where that newborn king was born so he could probably go and get rid of him. And, 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 and he presented it to the wise men. He said, I want y'all to let me know where this, this newborn king is and I want to come worship him. Basically, if you, if you dig down into it, chances are he was lying to him right then. And you say, how do, how do you really know that? Look at verse 12. After they had came and worshipped and presented their gifts, it says this, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return unto Herod, they departed into their own country another way. God says, I'm going to watch out for you and I'm watching out for my son. And he said, I want y'all to go this other way. Even after they did everything God wanted them to do, they were still led by God's Spirit. This morning, I hope and pray that everybody in this church is saved, ready to go, going to heaven, and all of that right now. I hope that you are right where you need to be with God. But I also hope that you continue to allow God to lead you and to guide you. You see, that's true of us this morning. As we look at these wise men, just because we're saved doesn't mean we don't, we don't need to continually be led by God. I believe you as a church and, and, and you as a family, you ought to, to uh, strive and try your best to let God lead you in everything that you do. Any decision that you make, you ought to pray about it. Anything that you decide to do, you ought to pray about it. We've got things that the church is going to be voting on uh, next month. You know what? Instead of, instead of us wondering about it, we need to be praying about it. We need to say, God, we want the right thing to happen for this church. Some of you have got decisions that you've got to make on your families. Instead of worrying about it, be praying about it. Say, God, I want you to uh, show me the direction that I need to go in. You see, the Bible says right here that God showed them how to not go back to King Herod, but to go another way. He began to lead them. You see... This morning, we need God to lead us in each and everything that we do. We need His guidance and direction as much now as we've ever needed it. The Bible says in John 16, verse 13, Howbeit when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. That's the Spirit leading us. This morning... We don't need to be worried about things. We don't need to be concerned about every little bitty thing. Why? Because if we're doing what God wants us to do, God will lead us. We need to pray that God leads us, that He guides us, that He takes care of us. See, there is so much to learn from these wise men in Scripture. If we had more time, we could probably study more about them and, and find out more things. But these are the things that I want you to think about this morning. That God puts forth great effort to reach every person. That God wants us to diligently seek Him. That we need to worship Christ when we come to this place. And we need to continually be led by His Spirit. This morning we can learn some things. 
As I ask you this morning, as we come to a close, I want to ask you, is there one of these things that has touched your heart today? You know that you need to do something about it. You can do something this morning. We're about to have an invitation. We're about to give you an opportunity. If you want to come up here and let us pray for you, we want, by all means, we want to do that. This morning, if, if you're here and you've never been saved, God can save you today. You've got to open up your heart. The Bible talked about here, these wise men, they were not associated with God, but God called them. I tell you, I hope and pray that everybody that we invite to this church and comes through this door, I hope that they can truly say when they leave here, whether they got saved or not, I felt God calling me. Mm -hmm. if, if, that, if that could happen, I tell you, we have done everything that we possibly can. I want to tell you, I can't call anybody. I can, I can, I can beg people to get saved. I can give them the uh, the gospel. I can do all of that, but I can't save anybody. It gets on. It, it, it worries me when people say, "Well, you know, preacher, you ought to you ought to get that person saved." Hey, it's out of my hands. I can't do any of that. It, 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 it's left up to God. But this morning, as we come here, maybe somebody in this place, God's calling you to be saved. Or God's calling you to remove distractions out of your life. Maybe you haven't been worshiping Christ like you need to because you've got all these problems and cares in your life. Maybe you need to rely on God's guidance this morning. I don't know the case. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing, but I do know one thing, that God's got the answer this morning. If you need to come and get saved, if you need to come and rededicate your life, if you need to come and say, God, I need all of this that's going on inside of me. I need it gone. God can do that this morning. God's got the ability to do whatever He needs us to do today. As everybody stands this morning and we get ready for a song, I want to I wanna invite you. I know we don't technically have an altar up here, but I tell you, I'm willing to pray with you no matter what you're going through. If you'll come or if you want to pray right where you're at, that's fine too. But just do whatever God wants you to do. As we sing this morning, please come if you need to. somebody to come back. I know Neil was telling me he invited somebody I think yesterday and they didn't come but hey, hey, just keep doing it. One of these days they will. So uh, if you will, let's let's try to invite people. Uh, let's try to uh, do everything that we can to, to grow the church and, and uh, you know God has entrusted us to do this and we need to put forth effort to, to do everything that we can uh, to get people to come and uh, we do thank you for being here, but we, we, want, we want to see more people come, and that's for sure. And we hope that everybody has a good Christmas. It's just a few days away. Uh, we hope that you're able to get together with family and friends and, and, uh, and have a lot to, to eat and, and good fellowship.
But like we said, don't forget the reason for all of this. And it's about Christ and it's about worshiping Him. We want to thank the church for the gift that you guys gave us. We sure do thank, we sure do thank you for that. Uh, you know how to touch our hearts as far as going and getting something to eat. So. <laughs> y'all may know us a little bit better than y'all think y'all do. <laughs> but uh, we, do, we do appreciate that. and we're, we're, We've been blessed by being here and, and uh, fellowshipping with you, and we sure do appreciate that. Uh, I want to remind you also, um, the elder nominations, yes. we need to get that in. I think, is it next, next Sunday, Sunday we're cutting off? Sunday. Okay. Well, right. yeah. So... Yeah. So we, we need to get those in. Even the ones that are already on it needs to be recommended or, or you know, put in, nominated again. So um, so be sure to do that. Um, I know there's still some cards over there that everybody is signing. If we can do that, um, I think some are for the ones that have visited, some that are uh, needing prayer. Uh, just just go by and sign that. It'll, it'll help somebody out, I'm sure. Anything else? The poinsettia is. Point, how, how you say it? Poinsettia. Poinsettia. Uh, that's, uh, that's one of those things. Cole will always, she likes to pronounce everything just right, and I just say stuff. So <laughs> They're flowers. Come by and get some flowers. So, uh, uh, but, yeah, if, if you bought those, come by and get it. I think all of them need to, to leave today. So... Uh, there may be some extra, so if you didn't purchase any, pick one up. Yeah, there are extra. There's yeah. extra. That's right. So, yeah. uh, let, let's do that. Yeah, well, we, that's right. Yeah, y'all take as many as you want. They're there, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> take them. But uh, we, we do, uh, I want to say that we do appreciate um, last Sunday night. It, it was a blessing. It was. It was very appreciate Miss Melody for doing that. And I want to say that I appreciate her for being able to, to sing and and uh, to, to help us to worship. I tell you, if, if you've ever been a part of a church or went to a church where there was no singing and music and stuff like that, it's a little bit tough. And uh, I tell you, I know the things that she does, she adds a lot to these, to, to our church. And, and, uh, and, the kids, and the kids loved it. They were uh, really like being a part of it. And um, so I... Mary Ella was singing some yesterday in the truck, and I told her, I said, you and your mama needs to get a song and sing at church. Oh, and, oh, yeah. And I was like, why? <laughs> so, so uh, some are not willing to do it. So. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, if I can sing good, y'all get tired of hearing me sing. But, uh, but I, I, it, God just did not give me that. And uh, Mama didn't help me out, I don't guess. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else we need to make mention of before we dismiss this morning? Yeah. All right, sure was good seeing everybody again. Hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Be safe. Uh, I think it's the rain stopping today, I, I think. But um, definitely be careful out there. It's messy. So we'll be dismissed. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for just letting us come this morning and the fellowship and God, for the good singing and the, uh, your word that we're able to preach from. God, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us this liberty and given us this freedom, Lord, to worship you and to serve you. And I pray, God, that we would continually, on a daily basis, grow and get closer to you. God, we pray for our church. We pray for the needs of our church, the ones that were not able to be here this morning, for all the needs that were called out. God, there were so many today. And I pray, Lord, that you just comfort hearts and help people. Help people that are in need. Let them look to you for help and for guidance. And God, for our church, just continue to touch it. Continue to use it. And God, I pray, Lord, let this next year be a year that you bless this church. That you grow this church. And, 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 and help us, Lord, to just be willing to serve you. Lord, help us to get ourselves out of the way. Lord, that you might be glorified and you might be uplifted. Go with us now as we depart from this place. Let everybody have a great Christmas. Watch over and protect each and every person. Bless families, Lord, that are part of this church. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh. oh.